Hello, my name is Gilbert Arbé. I am professor at the School of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science at the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Ottawa. I am also ambassador for the Electrical and Computer Engineering programs. I am happy to welcome you to EECS this fall. EECS is one of the best schools in computer science and in electrical, computer, and software engineering in Canada. This video introduces the computer and electrical engineering programs, as well as services, resources, and activities available at the faculty and at the university. During your studies, you will be surrounded by professors and staff who want and will help you to succeed during your program. I would like to introduce here three directors at the school. Claude Damour is a director of EECS. Voiko Groza is associate director of the computer engineering program. And Derek McNamara is associate director of the electrical engineering program. You should contact the undergraduate studies uh, office for matters related to course registration, course schedule conflicts, prerequisite waiver requests, requests related to your course sequence, and other issues specifically governed by rules and regulations of U Ottawa. This office will contact one of these directors with regards to such issues when they need to. You may also contact the associate director of your program directly by email in connection with questions other than those I've mentioned. These include questions such as on deciding which fourth year concentration in ELG to select, or options in the CEG program to select, or questions of the sort, have I chosen the right program? And serious problems you may perceive uh, with the way a particular course is actually being offered. An online meeting will be arranged with the associate director who will in turn seek counsel of the EECS director if necessary, or possibly advise, uh, possibly advise you to contact the undergraduate studies office. It is also possible to contact the director directly by email or uh, by contacting his assistant to meet with him to discuss your issues. The school offers four main programs. As our objective in this video is to cover two of these programs, the ELG and the CEG programs, a different video discusses the software engineering and computer science programs. Let us take a moment to overview the first, few, the first two programs. You can obtain more details on the EECS website. Both these programs focus on practical problem solving, that is, engineering of products and services rather than pure science. The set of courses in your program will allow you to understand, adapt, and contribute to new technology throughout your career. Electrical engineering is the application of the laws of physics governing electricity, magnetism, and light, that is electromagnetism, to develop products and services. This topic covers a number of domains, including but not limited to communications, such as wireless communications and optical fiber, as well as power systems, avionics, antennas, and medical equipment. Computer engineering is basically is based on the electrical engineering program, but with a particular interest in developing computer products and services. Those following this program should be interested in computer hardware and low level programming. Both the CEG and ELG program offer the same course sequence in the first year. These courses allow students to cover fundamental concepts and knowledge. As you can see, you have already studied some of the science and math topics in high school. But some course content will be new, particularly the introduction to computing course. In second year, more, fundamental, more fundamentals are presented, but with a focus on engineering content. Many courses are still common between the two programs, but CEG will replace some electrical engineering content with software engineering and computer courses. In third year, more engineering content is presented. ELG programs include more ELG topics, such as electromagnetics, semiconductors, machines, and power. It includes additional courses on signals. The CEG program will include more courses on digital systems, software, and software, such as operating systems. In fourth year, 
Both programs include an engineering design project, also known as the Capstone Project. This project allows students to apply their knowledge and techniques learned during their program in a significant project. This project lasts both terms of the fourth year. In terms of coursework, the ELG program offers five options or areas of concentration. The CEG program, on the other hand, has two compulsory courses and a number of electives. Both programs offer the co-op and entrepreneurship options. More, will be dis more on the co-op uh, co option will be provided a bit later in this presentation. The entrepreneurship option includes five business and management courses, such as Introduction to Business Management, Marketing, and Engineering Law. ELG students have an option to add another year to their program to obtain a, and obtain a second degree, the Bachelor's in Computing Technology. The extra year allows students to take many computer and science and software engineering courses included in the CEG program. This option allows the, the electrical engineering student to gain knowledge and experience in the computing field, which is still quite important in the electrical engineering. This slide shows some equipment which, in, uh, which you will encounter during the CEG program. On the left, you will see a card called the Dragon 12 Development Board, which is used in the Computer Architecture 2 course, where you will study the operation of microcontrollers. The other two examples show equipment used or developed during capstone projects. Robotics is an important area of study in the CEG program. And here we also see a sign language interpreter that was developed by a group of students during their capstone project. In the EEG programs, you'll be exposed to one of, a num uh, one of uh, five areas in fourth year. Here we show solar panels and solar circuits that were originally used in the Sustainable Energies course. This equipment has since been updated. We also have two capstone examples. One, is, uh, one which is a biomedical application where students developed a controller for manipulating a prosthetic arm from muscle EMG signals. The other illustrates that some projects involved outside companies. The students worked with our SunLab research group to develop the power system uh, of a lunar rover. As you know, the courses are being offered at a distance this year using online technology. Providing lab, uh, providing lab activities poses a challenge. Rest assured that much thought has been given to the issue by professors involved. Some courses, such, uh, uh, are, uh, some courses are such that the lab, the lab work lends itself to online access with little TA intervention. Others will have the TAs video conferencing with students who are doing a particular lab, with the TA physically in the lab, and then have students complete lab reports as if they actually were present in the lab. Um, to give you an idea uh, of how labs are dealt with in your first year, let's talk about two of your first year courses. For the chemistry course, chemistry 1311 course, experiments are simulated using software and you'll be computing, completing them on your own time. Thus, you won't see any uh, official lab time scheduled for that particular course. This approach was used uh, successfully during the summer with about 100 francophone students. The physics course, which is offered in the winter term, students will register to a lab session uh, so that they actually participate in an online lab session every, roughly every two weeks between 2.30 and 5.30 p.m. You will have a total of five lab sessions. At the beginning of the uh, beginning of the semester, you'll have access to all of the five lab manuals with theory and a set of experimental details, contains raw data and, uh, um, and a description of the experiments to be, uh, that, are, that were completed during the session. Each lab itself contains two or three experiments that are based on the same topic. During the lab session, uh, there'll be an online tutorial with your TA 
for about 15 or 20 minutes and then the students work on the lab reports with uh, the data files uh, with the data files and content in the lab manuals students must submit their lab reports by the end of the session to brightspace where the TAs will actually correct uh, the lab reports students are expected to read lab manual and take a look at the data files and question uh, or to take a look at the data files ahead of their lab session so that they are prepared uh, the report will contain a number of calculations graphs short answer questions an online quiz will also have to be taken uh, in brightspace you'll be able to interact with your ta during the whole uh, during the whole session on teams and be able to ask questions if you have some difficulty as you can see the university has worked hard in providing you with appropriate learning experiences and activities in our current context. Let's talk about professor expectations and how to succeed in your program. To study engineering can be challenging but also highly rewarding. Be proud of being here and take the necessary actions. Your program is a unique opportunity to be trained as a professional engineer and consider that your program is your first professional commitment. You are responsible for your learning process. Discipline yourself to do a good job in every single course. It is your responsibility to motivate yourself and keep focused. Attend all your classes, even if the tip topic is less interesting, even if you find the prof a little bit boring. Complete your readings and your assignments. It is essential to your learning and understanding process. You may discuss and exchange ideas with colleagues, TAs, tutors, and the professor, but ultimately you must do the work yourself. Remember that learning and understanding is the main objective of your program. If you study and understand and learn, good grades will follow. But you are not alone. You can obtain support from professors and TAs. The faculty and university offers many services to help if you run into some difficulties. Mentors, student associations, support services are all here to help you. But you must ask for help. Extracurricular activities help complete your program. Get involved, develop your soft skills such as communications, teamwork, and hands-on experience. All programs, all engineering programs in Canada are accredited by the Canadian Engineering Accreditation Board, the CEAB. They evaluate regularly the engineering programs and ensure that uh, proper content is being delivered through prerequisites and co-requisites. In addition to evaluating the content that's being delivered by the engineering programs, the CAB requests that the universities actually evaluate what students have learned. In particular, we evaluate 12 different attributes. These are skills that students are expect to actually integrate during their four years of the university. Of those 12 attributes, five of them are actually technical in nature. Things like problem analysis, design, investigation, using engineering tools. Seven of them, though, though, are soft skills, things like individual and teamwork, communication skills, right? Impact of engineering on society and environment, ethics and equity, and lifelong learning, developing skills to learn, which you will be doing throughout your, your career. This gives you an idea of what's expected uh, of you to learn and the skills that you should be developing uh, over the four years that you'll spend uh, with us at the university here at the faculty. This last slide talks about engin engineering education and what uh, a little bit what's expected as well uh, of you. So it's worthwhile reading this slide. Technology will expand and change rapidly throughout your career. The important thing is to obtain an engineering education that will not simply enable you to blindly use the latest novelties, but be able to understand in depth the significant developments in modern technology and be prepared to play a role in shaping its future. 
What does this mean? Your training is not only about recreating, but about creating and innovating. Engineering design is very challenging, but also a very creative process. It also means that you will be developing the new technologies and participating in the evolution of that new technology. The key to meeting this challenge is understanding the subjects that you will be studying. I hope you have found this information on the ELG programs, uh, the ELG and, and CEG programs useful. I would like to wish you luck in your program and in your first year. One of our students will be presenting services, resources, and other activities available at the university and at the faculty. Hello everyone, my name is Zoya and I'm going into my fourth year of electrical engineering at the University of Ottawa. Today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about the facilities at the Faculty of Engineering. So first off, let's start with the Undergraduate Studies Office. The Undergraduate Studies Office offers many services, starting with academic advice, advice on course sequences and how to adjust your course sequence if you need to, advice on registering for your courses and enrolling, or dropping or swapping, advice on academic rules, changing your program if you feel like you need to, and they offer many forms for things like changing your program and course sequences and so on. The workshop is the Engineering and Computer Science Mentoring Center. They offer things like individual consultations with mentors, group discussions with mentors, study groups for specific courses, and workshops. Mentors will communicate with you on a weekly basis and they know where most student services are so they can help you find any resources you need on campus. We also have this upcoming project where you will be getting a personalized mentor. The Engineering Peer Connect program is an opportunity for you to meet students, make new friends, network, and socialize with other engineering and computer science students. It is a volunteer-based program and students need to register to participate. The faculty will be pairing students from all levels with other students based on their interests. When you're paired with a student, you can interact with them however you choose to, whether it's in person or through social media or many other platforms like MS Teams or email and Yammer and whatever works best for you. Watch out for an email from us. The registration will be the end of August 2020, so it will be available soon. We have many student clubs and associations at the faculty. I was a part of one myself called WISE. As you can see, it's the Women in Science and Engineering. All students are welcome to join any club or association that they find interesting, whether it's building a highly fuel efficient or off-road vehicle to designing a human hamster wheel for a museum display. There are many options to choose from. So if you are interested in working in a team or getting creative, then join one of our clubs and you can work on these exciting projects. SEED, or the Center for Entrepreneurship and Engineering Design, offers student competitions all year round, design courses so you can work with real life clients, design spaces and facilities that I'll talk about soon, and an entrepreneurial ecosystem so that you can develop your business skills and learn more. The buildings you see here offer different facilities and different spaces for students to use throughout the semester. Starting off with the STEM building, which houses most of the SEED facilities, SITE, which is the engineering building for electrical engineers, computer engineers, and computer science students, CDY, the Colonel By building, which is for civil engineering students, mechanical students, biomedical mechanical students, and so on, and the ARC building, which is the advanced research complex where most masters and PhD students do their research. Here we have some of the facilities that you'll find in the STEM building that you saw earlier. The Brunsfield Center is a student-led machine shop where staff and students can work with traditional manufacturing equipments like mills, lathes, bandsaws, drill presses, even welding and fabrication tools once you receive your proper training. It's open to all students who complete their training, which is offered by the Manufacturing Training Center. 
The Makerspace and the Maker Lab are both also in the STEM complex. The Makerspace is a place that allows everyone to collaborate and build their own projects. It's open to students, community members, and it's open to anyone who would like to invent, make, build, play, whatever they can think of. The space is organized by students from different fields of studies at the faculty. The Maker Lab offers a course-based laboratory setting focused on rapid prototyping technologies. The university courses can include lab sessions at the Maker Lab to give students a structured experience learning about many of the technologies available at the Makerspace. The Simon Nam Design Commons is a reconfigurable space that offers whiteboards, markers, couches, computers, it is a space that is open for everyone to meet in and the space that fosters creativity, design and all different kinds of ideas. The John McIntyre team space is a space that offers tools for students in teams so they can work on their projects that you will see next. There are many competitive teams at the faculty and most of these teams compete in diverse international competitions. There are teams that work on rockets, cars, electric cars, urban cars, concrete canoes for civil engineering, formula for all programs, bionics for biomedical mechanical engineers, and so many different aerospace engineering teams as well. Undergraduate students can also pursue opportunities in research by applying to the Europe scholarship. This scholarship is worth $1,000. It helps you gain 50 hours of work in research between October and March, and you'll be supervised by a faculty member. The application for the scholarship is open as of August 1st, 2020. The co-op program just might be the solution you're looking for if you want to work and study, which gives you more experience after you graduate. There's a 96% placement rate for most engineering students at the faculty especially considering the tech hub in Canada. The salaries range between $18 and $22, and University of Ottawa is the number five largest university co-op program in Canada. The co-op program works like this. Study terms and paid work terms alternate. You end up with a degree and a year or more of practical work experience. During this time of increasing globalization and automation, most employers are seeking to recruit students who have the employment skills and values of a global citizen. In response to this growing interest, the University of Ottawa decided to launch UO Global Recognition. This is a program that aims to guide the development of your employment skills that are valued around the world, such as cross-cultural communication, innovation, adaptability, and so much more. Since these are changing times, these are some of the departments that can help you with your virtual transition into the university, such as the Career Development Center, the Student Academic Success Service, or SAS, and Student Life. Thank you for being here. You can also join us for a live Q&A session on September 8th. We'll be sending you more information via email, so stay tuned.